Normally I keep the tractor at camp, but I had some yard work to do at the house. And as you can see, look what's coming, the snow. So I ordered up a quick attach plate for the front of this. And we're gonna go get a snow plow, build a snow plow quick attach for the front of the tractor. Oh, she's not light. So here's our quick attach plate that I ordered from Amazon for like 160 bucks. Uh, it's half inch plate. Should be really, really strong. All right, so here we are. We're back in the garage. It's a few days later. <clears throat> um, this is my plan. I got rid of the hydraulic rams for the angling, and we're gonna cut it somewhere in here and weld it to my quick attach plate. I don't really need the hydraulic angling. All I'm gonna do is drill a hole in here and I'll be able to put a pin where it's 90 degrees or square and then I'll have a pin with a few degree turn each way and I'll just hop out and manually do it if I need to. Um, I just don't, I want the plate as close to the plow as I can get it just so it's not hanging out there heavy flopping around. So this way with uh, getting rid of the hydraulics, it's just easier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some marks here. I'm gonna take the porta band saw and buzz that off and just throw this away. And then we'll line it up on our quick attach plate and tack it and do some bracing, see how it comes out. This piece of metal is just holding the plate up so it doesn't tip on me. So I have it centered. Um, I have it as low as I can put it on my quick attach plate. And I'm gonna do a couple tacks and we'll see if we like where it's at. Yeah, look at that one, wow. The guys at the metal shop would be impressed with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. All right, so we have the frame of the plow welded to the quick attach plate, and I made some reinforcement brackets out of quarter inch by two inch flat stock. And we're gonna weld these on something like this. Just to give it a little more reinforcement uh, because my welds probably aren't the best and when you're slamming into a frozen bank of course we want it uh, as strong as possible so we'll get these welded on and then what we'll do is we'll take this flap off so i can paint it all and then we're going to go over to the fab shop and get a chunk of pipe for the bottom of the plow some people use shoes that go on there, the round shoes that ride on the ground. Um, I'm going to put a piece of pipe. That way, when we're plowing, it doesn't tear the gravel up or the sod, and it just kind of floats across stuff. Just a little bit easier, I think. So, let's go ahead, let's get these brackets welded on. We'll take that strip off the top, um, and then we'll get our pipe. I don't know if we'll put that flat back on. Um, of course, it's just to keep snow from flying over the plow if you have quite a bit in front. We got our flap off the top. Uh, we got our brackets in. 
Uh, we need to do some more welding on those. They uh, look pretty ugly. But let's go over to the fab shop next door and get a piece of two inch pipe. Um, and we'll get some little tabs that will weld to the pipe and then we'll weld up onto the scraper bar. Maybe we'll put like four on there. So let's go over to the fab shop and grab our pipe. Was fast. All right, here we go. We have our schedule 82 inch pipe. Um, it's the same length as the plow, and I got a couple three inch by three inch tabs. We're just gonna weld on here like this. We'll probably put at least three, maybe four, and we'll just weld them on like this. And then we'll just weld that tab there. We'll put a bead on each side, so if I ever need to, I can angle grind it, cut it off. So let's go ahead, let's put these tabs on this pipe. All right, so there's my four tabs that will be welded to the scraper bar. And I just eyeballed them. So, not too bad. Looks pretty straight to me. So let's get the plow lifted up and then we'll put this on and tack it on. Okay, so here we have our shoe, or our sod saver. And I'm just gonna weld this on here just like this. All right, there, I have it clamped on so you can get a little better idea. So that's pretty much a base coat. Of course, a lot of the black got onto the blue, which doesn't matter. I was just kind of putting the first coat down. And I'm going to tape off the cutting edge from the blue plow. And I'm painting it blue to match the tractor. It's an LS. So you might be wondering why it's blue instead of most plows are red. So that's the plan. This is just a base coat. I'm gonna let it dry. Then I'll get a piece of uh, cardboard or something, or maybe I'll just tape it off, make a nice clean line, get another coat of blue on here. And like I said, it's an LS tractor, so I might put LS on the blade in black just to make it look like it's a factory piece of equipment. Just to match, I don't know. All right, so off camera, I taped this off. I taped off the scraper blade from the blue with a tape line. And I did one coat off camera, but we'll go ahead and hit it again. Sometimes I just get too excited and forget to film. I'm somewhat new to this YouTube filming everything, so bear with me. Alright, so there's something else you guys might pick up in the video. There's a big gap between my uh, bar and the old scraper blade. And there isn't one down here. I know it looks like I put that on crooked, but what happened is that scraper bar actually wore funny. Uh, when I put that bar on, I measured from each end and made it parallel. So if for some reason you see that and you think it's crooked, it's actually not. It's just the way that the old scraper bar is wore down. All right, so let's pull this tape off and see what my transition line looks like. <clears throat> We have one more piece of blue tape here. All right, that looks pretty good. Nice clean line. All right, and since we painted it LS blue to match the tractor, I made a little LS uh, template that I'm going to put in the middle here and paint it black just so it looks like an LS implement. All right, so I have my template laid down and because it's curved, it keeps wanting to lift off of the plow. So I've got some pieces of metal and I'm gonna do one letter at a time. No! Fuck. All 
All right, that's not so bad. And then I also have the little apostrophe or whatever they have above the S that I will do. I did it again. I got all excited and went ahead and painted the asterisks above the S without filming. So, anyways, here it is. Guys, I got it all loaded. Had my tripod set up with the camera. Was filming it. Talked to the camera for a bit. Turned around. Went to shut the phone off. And it wasn't recording. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. And I am not taking it out to reload it. Sorry guys. Um, but what I was saying is I loaded it upside down like this. So hopefully I can take the tractor. Hook the quick attach plate and just uh, lift it right up out of the truck. So let's head out to camp where the tractor's at and we'll unload this. What we're gonna do is unload the plow, fire up the tractor, and uh, hook it up, see what it looks like. First thing, let's go fire up the tractor, and let it warm up. So the temperature right now is about uh, 25 degrees out and I just purchased this tractor this spring. So I'm not really sure how it's gonna start. When it's this cold, I'm gonna go ahead and let the glow plug cycle a couple times. Alright. That actually started pretty well. So we'll let that warm up and we'll go ahead and unstrap the plow and get ready. I forgot, first of all, we have to take the bucket off. So let's go ahead, I'll throw it on a pallet right here. I really want to show you guys how much nicer that pipe is on the bottom than shoes and a scraping blade especially in sod like right along here this is all grass this is part of the field that we mow
All right, and as you can see, there's really no damage to the lawn with that two inch pipe. Whereas if you had that scraper, that cutting edge, it would dig down and peel the sod right back. So this whole road coming in is gravel all the way to the camp. So I really wanted that pipe on there not to push my gravel around or the sod. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, and I, I just want to show you really quick how I plan to pivot it. So I, had, I just have a pin here, and there's a bunch of holes drilled, so I can pivot it, put it straight, put it at whatever angle I want, um, which just seems easier than hooking up a secondary auxiliary hydraulic to run the ram that would angle it. Out here, I'm probably just going to angle it one way and plow out, plow in, and just keep pushing it back further and further. So I really don't need the angling too much. And it allows my plow to be closer to this um, quick attach plate. Otherwise, with those rams in there, I would probably have to have it out another 12, 16 inches. So I'm really happy with this. It's simple, less stuff to break or freeze up. In the winter. I don't know. I just, just didn't really see the need for it. Now, all we have to do is wait for some snow. All right guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. We'll be doing a lot of projects like this. Fun stuff outside. And like I mentioned, we'll be building a whole new house and we're gonna document the entire process of that. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, go ahead, hit the subscribe. Thank you.